The creative industries contribute more than £70 billion to the UK economy. And Creative England is a not-for-profit that, that was established to fund, collaborate and unite the creative uh, industries across the UK. And tonight we're delighted to have Caroline Norbury, MBE, who is the CEO. Welcome, Caroline. Hi. Can you tell us, start by telling us a little bit about uh, the UK's digital and creative sectors and, and the work that you do at Creative England? Certainly. So, um, so we work across, um, as you said, creative and digital, but mainly across film, TV, video games and a range of other sort of content related creative and digital businesses and um, you've already uh, said that the uh, about how, how much the sector is worth is actually worth a bit more than that now so the creative sector is worth about 84 billion pounds wow. um, and the digital sector is worth about I think it's about 118 billion so it's a it's a massive you know it's a massive part of our economy and what's also interesting and important about this part of our economy is it's growing much much faster than other parts of the economy and of the economy overall and it also employs an awful lot of people so the creative sector itself employs over 1.5 million people um, and the types of people and the types of jobs are very high value so in terms of a, as a driver of future economic growth um, it's very, very important. And the global um, opportunity for content businesses um, is worth, you know, several trillion. <laughs> so oh, so yeah. it's, uh, it's, um, it's definitely um, a place to be in, I would say. We, we've, we've seen, obviously, over the last five years, lots and lots of projects, companies, films, music, raising money on Indiegogo, on Kickstarter. Are you seeing, are you starting to see um, uh, a big traction with the, with the regulated equity crowdfunding platforms helping the creative industries in the UK? I think that um, th there's definitely something about the creative um, business model uh, that, that works very well on those sorts of platforms and works very well for you know um, for um, the uh, for a, a crowd form whether that's as a uh, whether that's a reward based or whether that's that's equity um, so you know lots of if you look at music which isn't my thing but but if you look at music but it, and if you look at um, video games TV films they all operate um, as um, standalone, quite often a standalone projects. So, so they're so actually raising funds in that way through, from the crowd works very, very well for their business model. And for certain things in particular, something like a video game, actually, it's not just um, that the that the business structure works, but the but video games are uh, they're in, uh, they 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 develop iteratively. So you don't necessarily have um, you can do. A, a fair degree in terms of developing the game and then you can test that proposition so if you can test that proposition with the, with the crowd and you can see how well that game is doing you don't necessarily need to pay for all of it in order to do that so um, so an investor can also get an idea of how well that product is going to to do with that particular market so it works almost as a market testing um, opportunity as okay. well yeah. so uh, one of your initiatives is the 50 future leaders can you, can you share with us, is that an annual um, initiative or is, is, is that being a, a, a specific initiative that's just happened recently? Well, well we're only four years old, so, it's the, so we've been running it, for, this is our, or last year was our second year of running it, but yes, it's going, it is going to be an annual, um, uh, an annual initiative and what we're, what we're particularly looking for are uh, creative leaders, particularly outside of London. So, so most of the of the future leaders that we've highlighted um, all run and or have been starting up or developing businesses outside of London, um, and um, uh, and we think it's really really important to shine a light on those businesses because uh, something like 75% of digital businesses are based outside of London, but unfortunately there's still a, a massive pull to London for investment. And one of the things that we're trying to do is to look at those regional pockets of capital as well and to try and help um, uh, sort of broaden the ecosystem for investment into creative and digital businesses. So we, I mean, we have our own funds, so we invest um, uh, mainly in, we, we, we only put small amounts of money in. Um, but what we're trying to do is to give companies a small amount of capital to um, help them either develop their own IP 
or because we have more understanding of their business than perhaps non-seasoned investors in, in creative businesses. Mm. So the point around future leaders is that we're, it's one of the other ways in which we can shine a light on, on some of those really, really interesting businesses that probably wouldn't get the airtime and the, and the sort of spotlight that if they were in London they would do. And, and so what are the top three creative hotspots outside of London? Well, they all begin with a B at the moment. Oh, do they? Okay. So Bristol, Bournemouth, Brighton would be where I would say. So Bristol, for example, which is where um, our main office is, is, um, uh, is, has just been highlighted in the Tech Nation report as the best place to start a new business. It's got a very, very active private sector. Um, it's got great graduates. It's got an amazing cultural centre. I mean, the true is also the same is true, I'd say, of um, Bournemouth and Brighton as well. Um, but also some of our, you know, our northern cities, so Manchester, for example, has the largest number of computer science graduates in the, in the country. So it's, and it's got um, a really, really vibrant um, tech set sector and a really vibrant cultural set sector as well. Um, Birmingham is another, another area where there is a really interesting growing cluster of digital businesses um, in Leeds and obviously also up in Scotland around Dundee. Um, your, the funds that you invest into projects and businesses, mm -hmm. uh, what basis do you invest in? What are the criteria and what do you seek in return? So, um, what, so, we're, so as you said, we're a not-for-profit. So we have, um, so we have a, a series of, if you like, um, what I call on the side of angels criteria, and we have a series of obviously you know, right. straightforward investment criteria. Yeah. So most of, as I said, we put small amounts of money in. Um, and what we're looking for is we're looking for those for those businesses to grow in value and um, principally to create jobs. So that was the that's the that's the main uh, impetus for those funds. Um, and we um, and we do this in a variety of ways. So we offer um, something that you're, I'm sure your viewers will find quite funny, which is interest-free loans. Mm -hmm. um, so we offer interest-free loans. Um, we run accelerator programs. Um, where we have an incubator programs with startups and then we run a whole number of programs where we partner with um, large corporates and what we're trying to do is to use the the public funds that we're in that we're putting into those companies to leverage in to well first of all to de-risk those those business yep. business properties those investment propositions but then secondly to leverage in private funds um, and so uh, one of one of our partners is Microsoft um, and we, we've been working with them for a couple of years now to um, find really interesting new games and new gaming companies in the social and mobile space. So Microsoft have very established console, um, make very established sure. console games. Um, find it very, well, not very hard, I have found it hard to find um, those quicker, cheaper propositions. And so we're able to source um, a really interesting talent pipeline for them. Um, and so with that sort of model work, which we call big guy, little guy, helping each other, um, we've, what we're, sort of, we've, we're doing that with a range of other, of other corporates as well. Fantastic. And, and um, what's the vision for Creative England in the next three years? So ultimately, what, what we'd like to be able to do would be, obviously, we want to continue to grow. We want to continue to grow the companies that we're working with. But what we're, what we're really keen on doing is, um, is setting up our own private fund. So we think we've got a really interesting offer for um, for investors um, because be, because we're we're based all all throughout the the um, all throughout the country. I, I, I haven't said that really, but you know we've got um, networks and offices in Bristol, Birmingham, um, uh, Manchester, London, obviously Leeds, Sheffield. So we're, we we we're very well spread. Um, so we've got access to some really, really interesting companies. We see them at a much earlier stage than lots of other people do. So one of the things that we're trying to do is to, is to think about how we might start to now build a private fund that can then come in after we've put the public money in and see how those businesses have, 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 have fared. Exciting. Well, we look forward to hearing more about the uh, Creative England Fund in due course, Caroline. Uh, we're going to take a break now. Thanks very much for joining us. That was Caroline Norbury, MBE, CEO of Creative England. <laughs>